Hello, welcome back sa subject natin, Pre-Stress Concrete Design. And uh, to continue our discussion, we will be starting off with a new lecture or new topic about the analysis of numbers under flexure. So uh, after we have already identified how to calculate yung mga pre-stress losses natin, uh, we will now proceed on the analysis of um, members uh, wherein yung main consideration natin for this course is yung ating beam, okay? Pre-stress concrete beam. So, uh, yun yung consider natin uh, for this uh, particular lecture. So, as part one of this lecture, uh, here is our outline. So, first is we will have an introduction uh, regarding the uh, analysis and design of members for flexure. And then, we will talk about the cracking moment, and then current points or current zone, what are those? Then we will discuss also pressure line, and then lastly is yung limiting zone na tinatawag natin, right? So for our outcome for this session, um, um, hopefully uh, we can finish it up with the following. So to discuss to you the concept useful for the analysis of uh, sections for flexure, then to define the cracking moment of a precess concrete beam, then to identify the current zone of a precess concrete members, and for us to um, to really validate our underst our understanding with these concepts, we will demonstrate how these um, properties will be calculated in an applied example. Okay, so let's start. So. As an introduction, uh, we have here a um, a division or classification of what we do as uh, as engineer on structures. No, so basically, uh, when tasked to design a structure or when when tasked to um, to think about kung anong gagawin to sa structure, minsan ang gusto ni palam sa atin is pinapacheck sa atin kung kayang i-carry ng isang structure, isang member, yung mga mga loadings na naka-apply sa kanya. And that particular uh, procedure is kinakandak natin through analysis or investigation na tinatawag natin. So basically, we are determining the stresses dun sa steel and concrete and then um, chinacheck lang natin if yung section natin is capable or can withstand yung mga possible loadings na i-apply sa kanya. When we talk about design, um, it basically involves a much more complicated procedure. No? Kasi uh, bukod sa experience, uh, you need to be uh, well um, exposed dun sa, uh, sa member. No? Uh, I mean, um, you need to have adequate um, knowledge dun sa mga uh, minimum and maximum na ginagamit uh, based from the code. And also, ang main agenda natin for design is to choice the most suitable section na kayang mag-carry ng mga ina-assume natin loadings na pwedeng i-cargahin ng mismong member natin. Okay? So in actual practice, it is often necessary to per first perform the process of design when we are trying to assume a section. Um, and then, tsaka, tayo, tsaka natin siya i-analyze if our assumed section is um, sufficient to carry the loadings that uh, the structure will be subjected to. However, um, since design is a very rigorous procedure, it is often much easier to start with the analysis okay yung uh, it is easier to learn or to discuss yung o maintindihan yung method of analysis before mag design kasi uh, once you know how to analyze your uh, member uh, basically design is uh, medyo kabaligtara ng analysis uh, may mga uh, requirements lang tayo kailangan is satisfy based from the from the code okay so for this for this session we will uh, focus on analysis muna of the members for flexure and particularly 
this session will discuss yung mga concepts na binanggit ko kanina uh, before we really analyze a section as a whole. No? So, okay. So, ayan. So, ito yung mga sinabi ko. No? Uh, hindi pala siya nakashare. Sorry. So, ayan. So, again, uh, we will start with analysis kasi it's much more easier to discuss and to be understood by the students. Okay? So the analysis of flexural members or meaning beams under service loads involve the following uh, procedures. First is uh, we need to calculate yung tatawag natin cracking moment. And then next is to identify yung location ng mga current points. Then identify the location of pressure line. But uh, for some of you guys, these terms are very uh, new, no? So very foreign siya sa atin. Ano yung cracking moment? Although uh, we... Uh, have already uh, heard that dun sa siguro sa RCD na yun na subject, no? Pero yung si current, current points and pressure line, I don't think um, na-discuss na siya on the other subject. Si pressure line, uh, we have already discussed this one uh, previously, I think, um, our fourth meeting regarding the uh, general concept of pre-stressing. But uh, today, we will uh, be uh, reiterating how to locate yung pressure line natin. And what does it tell you? Uh, when you know yung location ng pressure line mo, um, what does it signify dun sa mismong stresses ng beam natin, ng fibers natin? All right? Okay, so let's start. So let's go first with the calculation of cracking moment. Okay? So si cracking moment or MCR is defined out as the moment due to the external loads at which the first crack occurs in a pre-stressed flexural member. Okay? So basically, si cracking moment, um, siya yung um, value ng moment na nagpo-produce ng, mga, mga, ng first crack doon sa structure natin. So uh, in, uh, yung cracks na yun, hindi siya visible sa naked eye natin. Pero internally, it's happening. Or microscopically, it's happening. And Diba, kung tayo yung magde-design ng member, we don't want to see um, cracking dun sa member natin kasi ano ba sinisignify pa nagka-crack na siya? Ibig sabihin, nai-stress na siya. So, may possibility na mag-fail na siya. No? Pero, kaya nga kailangan natin ma-control ma si cracking para alam natin kung yung section natin is capable or um, or is cracking during ng mga applied loadings natin. Okay? Due to the variability in stress at the occurrence of the first crack, uh, some engineers before are contesting, especially in pre-stress concrete design, yung pag-evaluate ng cracking moment. Kasi sabi nila, as pre-stress, um, medyo rigorous yung analysis kasi you are combining a, a high-strength material, which is yung tendons natin. And then, yung concrete natin. So, you cannot really assess the exact value para doon sa cracking moment, sabi nila. Kaya, basically, yung binibigay ng code na value for cracking moment are all an estimate. Pero, this estimate are based from um, experimental studies before. Kaya, uh, ginagamit natin siya ngayon. Okay? And in talking about cracking moment and uh, uh, the permissible stresses natin, uh, we need to distinguish our member into three types. Okay? So in first type natin is a fully pre-stressed member, type 1 member, or type 1 beam. Nang sabi, tension and cracking is not allowed. So meaning, hindi siya pwede magkamero ng, um, ng tension na stress. Okay? Or yung kapag uh, kinalculate niyo yung fiber stress natin, dapat lahat siya ay negative or in compression lang dapat siya. Okay? Dito siya pwede magkamero ng cracking. So, ibig sabihin dapat yung value ng uh, cracking moment mo is less than dun sa allow, allowed by the code. Okay? So, that, that is type 1. And we have type 2, which is yung limited pre-stress natin, where intention is allowed, pero within permissible stresses lang. And then, cracking is not allowed. So, uh, yun yung kaibahan niya sa type 1. And then, we have type 3, 
tension is allowed and cracking is allowed within permissible stresses lang. Okay? So, if this type of members are considering cracking and tension or impermissible stresses natin as a criteria, it is imperative na when designing such member, flexural member, uh, we need to check yung member natin for cracking. And if the cracking moment is greater than the moment due to the service load, so meaning do sa external load natin tsaka yung self-weight natin, uh, we need to do something about it. Okay? So one purpose of calculating yung cracking moment is also at uh, uh, ma-compare yung mga moment natin due to service load natin. Okay? So if we find yung moment natin due to the service load na less than sa cracking moment natin given by the code, then we expect the member na hindi siya magka-crack under service load. So kaya kailangan natin siyang i-check. Okay? So the stress at the bottom edge of the beam corresponding to the cracking moment ay equals daw dun sa tinatawag nating modulus of rupture. Okay? So what is modulus of rupture? So modulus of rupture is actually the flexural tensile strength ng concrete natin. Okay? So measured using a testing plane concrete beam under four-point loading. Uh, pero this particular value is uh, may formula na siya no? na pwede natin kunin sa uh, sa code natin. So, according to NSCP for 419.2.3.1, modulus of rupture is calculated as 0.62 squared of F prime C. Wherein yung answer natin here will be in terms of MPA. Okay. Uh, okay. So, in MPA, si F prime C okay, and MPA and then si FR is also in MPA. Okay. But once you check the code, actually there is uh, uh, a dito? delta uh, na symbol dun, na for normal with concrete, it's 1.0. Okay? Kaya 1.0 yung uh, kaya hindi ko na siya nilagay. Okay? Na basically, ilang din naman lagi yung ginagamit. Okay? Alright, so if we know yung uh, modulus of rupture, nung ating concrete, meron na tayong uh, pancheck. Once we get yung value nung ating uh, cracking moment, and then uh, may estimate na natin ngayon yung, yung permissible values niya. Okay? So, based from here, um, bali ilagay natin siya dun sa ating uh, stress concept before okay so based on stress concept okay so let's uh, let's pretend ito yung ating beam no and then we have a tendon okay dito so ito yung pre-stressing natin eff effective okay and then we have here our mcr so si mcr natin is based from uh, self rate plus yung ating external load. Okay? So, sabi doon sa previous slide, okay, stress as the bottom edge of the beam corresponding to cracking moment is equal to the modulus of rupture. Kaya makikita nyo dito, at the bottom of our stress diagram, there is a cracking, uh, uh, a modulus of rupture in a value doon. Okay? Kasi meron tayong cracking moment doon. Okay? And using this figure or using this diagram, we can estimate actually the value of MCR based from our uh, formula. Okay. Um, so consider natin na uh, meron tayong um, effect due to actual ng ating um, nung ating mismong uh, pre-stressing force. So Yung force na yun is uh, this one. Okay. Alam natin na P over A yun. Okay. And then we have um, moment due to pre-stressing kasi ito is may eccentricity siya, di ba? Okay. May eccentricity siya dito. So magkakos siya ng moment na pag-ano. Na magtatend na uh, 
uh, mag negative bending yung ating beam. So that is, pag may negative bending tayo, ito ay compression, ito ay tension. So um, compression tayo sa baba and then tension tayo sa taas. Okay, so that is negative P times E, yung ating moment, times yung ating distance from the extreme fiber. So Y, so dito ay YB, dito ay positive PE, YT or top over yung inertia natin sa gross. Okay, and then yung effect ng ating... Um, Nung ating moment, na cracking moment natin, nung tetend na mag-deflect sa positive bending. So, ibig sabihin, um, compressive yung taas, tensile yung baba. So, that will be compressive dito. Yan, tensile itong baba. So, that is due to MCR. Um, this is negative. And then, yung ating uh, distance dyan ay... Since this is top, so yt over ig, then we have here plus mcr, y bottom, ig. Okay? So these stresses, pag pinag-add-add natin, should resolve dun sa ating um, modulus of rupture, dun sa bottom fiber natin. Okay? Based from this diagram, we have fcr is equals to negative p over a, negative P, E, Y, B, I, G, or I na lang, no? or sige, gross, plus M, C, R, Y, B, over I, G. Okay? So kung gusto natin makuha yung makakuha tayo ng formula for cracking moment, uh, just need to transpose yung other terms and then isolate natin si M, C, R na term. no So itong term na to, isolate natin. So we have uh, M, C, R, YB over IG. This is equal to FCR plus P over A plus PE YB over IG. Okay? So to, um, to simplify this, I can multiply IG both sides. So yung mangyayari ngayon sa equation natin will be MCR YB is equal to FCR IG plus P I G over A plus P E Y B. Okay? And then to um, eliminate yung Y B, we need to divide all side by Y B. So M C R natin formula will be F C R I G over Y B plus P I G over A, Y, B, okay? plus dito magiging P na lang. Okay? So now, we now have a formula for cracking moment. So ma-identify na natin sa cracking moment based from our restressing force. Okay? And then this is, uh, ito yung sa restressing force natin. This is based from the, the moment effect ng pre-stressing force natin. And then, this one is based dun sa ating um, modulus of rupture. Okay? So, ayan. Kaka meron tayo ng iba't ibang um, tawag nito? Uh, um, iba't ibang pinanggalingan ng yung value ng moment to arrive with the value of cracking moment. Okay? So, yeah. so, so we can use this formula actually to identify yung MCR ng isang pre-stress kasi si FCR is um, again based from the code 0.67 squared of F prime C. Si IG is, can, we can calculate that. Si YB we can calculate that. Si P uh, some, uh, always given no? CE e or eccentricity natin, that is just um, yung ating value ng distance ng ating tendon from the neutral axis. So, we can calculate yung MCR natin. 
Okay, so yan si cracking moment. Next. Next is um, discuss naman natin ngayon si current points. Okay? So, bakit kailangan natin discuss si current points? Kasi si current points daw, so when yung centroid daw ng tendon natin is located within a specific zone ng beam natin, yung specific zone na yun is itong zone na to, yung shaded portion, no? yung colored portion natin. Um, Ibig sabihin, pag nandun siya, tensile stresses daw are not generated. Or ibig sabihin, hindi nag-under uh, ng, uh, ng tension yung mismong stress natin o yung member natin. Okay? So this zone is called the current of a section o yung current zone na tawag natin dito. Okay? So for a section symmetric about a vertical axis, the current is within the levels of upper and lower current. So may dal yung dalawang level na yun, ito yung nagde-define kung paano natin ma-identify yung zone natin, yung, yung current zone natin. So we have yung um, top current tsaka lower current, upper current tsaka lower current. So um, by geometry, okay, na later de-derive din natin, pwede natin ma-identify yung value ni KT and KB para malaman natin kung ano yung height nung zone na yun. Okay? And alam natin, may mga conditions tayo later on na once na may mga condition tayo na once na pumasok siya below or, or outside dito sa zone na to, alam na agad natin without even um, calculating yung actual value ng stresses natin na siya ay um, nagtatension, nagko-compression uh, based lagi lang dito sa, uh, sa current zone natin. Okay? So, The current zone is limited within two levels. Uh, yun nga, one is called the top current level and the other is called the bottom current level. Okay? So let's uh, discuss first yung tinatawag natin top current point or top current level natin. Si so top current is ang distance niya is um From the neutral axis, may certain distance siya dun sa, ano natin, sa compression side natin. And when we take yung, um, yung resultant ng compression side natin, okay, and nilocate natin siya dun sa mismong point kung nasan yung ating top current, okay, so nakalagay dito, based on stress concept, the stress at the bottom edge corresponding to C at KT above CGC is equated to zero. Ibig sabihin, kung yung resultant ng compression um, compression block natin is located dun sa mismong top curve natin, uh, magiging tensile stress ng bottom natin, ng bottom fiber natin is zero. So yun yung ibig sabihin niya dito. So, paano natin ngayon i-derive yung value ng KT? So, based from the effect lang nito, no? So, katulad lang din ng kanina, so ano ba nangyayari kung meron tayong kung meron tayo ditong com, uh, compression, pag nilagay natin yan sa gitna, okay? Kaka meron tayo ng moment na ganito, no? Na yung moment na yan ay C times KT. And then, meron din tayong axial na C. So yung stress natin is based from an axial load okay, na C. So this is, uh, since this is compressive, uh, para maging uniform lang tayo, that is C over A. Okay. Plus, ano yung magiging ano natin? So this is um, a moment na magkakos ng positive bending So, mangyayari sa atin is compression yung taas, tensile yung baba. So, this is compression siya, and then tension yung baba niya. Okay? So, this is compression. Uh, this is based from CKT times yung distance niya, YB, all over uh, I. Okay, then we have here yung ating uh, bottom, which is positive, CKT, 
times. Ah, uh, sorry, this is this should be top, no? Kasi uh, top fiber tayo. Then dito is bottom fiber over IG. Okay? So, para makuha yung formula natin, we equate yung ating bottom fiber. Makalagay sa atin, um, pag pinag-add natin to, it will be equals to zero. So, we have here negative C over A plus C times yung KT natin times YB all over IG is equals to zero. And then, when you go back, meron tayong formula for uh, si IG Dali ito siya sa area at saka sa radius of gyration. Pwede natin siyang gawing AR squared. Okay? So, negative C over A plus C KT YB over AR squared is equal to zero. Then, pag tinan nyo, pwede yung factor out si CA. So, be negative 1 plus KT YB over R squared is equal to zero. So, this will be... Uh, pag kinuos multiply natin sa other side that will be uh, eliminated na matitira lang is negative 1 plus kt yb over r squared is equals to 0 transposing yung 1 so kt yb over r squared is equals to 1 so we will have a value of kt is equals to r squared over yb so para ma-identify natin yung distance kt Ang kailangan lang daw natin is yung squared ng kanyang radius of gyration all over yung distance ng bottom fiber niya from the neutral axis. Okay? So, yung itong distance na to can be calculated using this formula. Okay? Yan yung sa top turn points natin. So, um, so kung yan yung sa top current points, yung sa bottom current point natin follows the same procedure. Pero based on stress concept, the stress at the top edge corresponding to C at KB below CGC or yung sa center ng uh, gross section natin is equated to zero naman. Sabi naman daw, pag yung ating uh, resultant ng compression block is directly acting do sa location ng KB, magkakos naman siya ng zero do sa top na ano natin, do sa, sa top fiber natin. So, uh, same procedure yung kanina. So, this will uh, produce um, anong classing moment? Uh, a clockwise moment na C, K, B ang value. And then, meron tayong uh, C dun sa gitna niya. So, sabihin yung stresses natin are based again from the compressive forces of C over A. Then, we have here, magkakos naman siya ngayon ng um, ng negative bending or negative bending do sa member natin. Okay? So, magiging compression dito, tension dito. Okay? So, compression on the bottom, then tension sa top. Okay? So, plus, um, this is CKB times YT all over um, IG. Then we have negative CKB YB over I. Okay? And pag pinag-add to, that will equate daw dun sa zero natin sa top fiber. So using that condition, so we have negative C over A uh, plus CKB YT all over IG is equals to zero. Then changing again si IG natin as in terms ni area and radius of generation. Then factoring out C over A we will have negative 1 plus KB YT over R squared is equal to 0. And we have negative 1 plus KB YT over R squared is equal to 0. Transposing that to the other side, R squared is equal to 1. We have a value of uh, K bottom um, okay, equal to R squared over YT. So, ayan. So, halos same ng format. Ang nang iba lang yung value na ating y. Kailangan naman siya kapag bottom curve yung ina-identify natin, we will consider yung um, top uh, distance nung, uh, nung 
ang top fiber natin from the neutral axis. Okay? So now that we know yung value ng current points natin, how can we use yung value ng current point to identify the value of our cracking moment? Kasi we can also use that. Okay? So the cracking moment is slightly greater than the moment causing zero stress at the bottom. Diba kasi kanina yun, kakos ng zero stress, located yung mismong compression block natin. Doon sa location ng KT natin. Okay? Ngayon, pag minove daw natin ng slightly upward yung ating compression block, magkukos siya ngayon ng, uh, ng modulus of rupture doon sa bottom fiber natin. And para makuha natin yung formula ng cracking moment, kailangan lang kunin natin yung Uh, kasi itong, itong compression block natin ng, ng tendon natin tsaka ng compression block is anong nangyayari dyan? Nagkaka meron siya ng couple. Yung couple na yun, yun yung ating cracking moment. Okay? So yun yung cracking moment natin. So yung cracking moment natin na yan ay ito yung direction. No? MCR. Okay? So um If we let yung distance na to as delta z, okay? So, paano natin ngayon makukuha yung value ng cracking moment natin? So, so cracking moment can be, uh, pwede natin gamitin si c or si t. So, si c na lang yung gamitin natin. c times yung moment arm nila, which is, yung moment arm natin is yung delta z plus kt plus yung eccentricity ng tendon natin. Okay? Then when we try to distribute, we have C times AZ plus C, tapos hindi ko na to distribute, plus E. Okay? And then we have here na ang incremental moment natin na CAZ, yan yung equal sa modulus of rupture natin times I over YP. So definition nyo to. Okay? So yung incremental moment na yun, nagkakos siya ng value na to, ang moment na to. Okay? So, meaning itong first one natin is FR I over YB okay? plus CKT plus CE. So, ano yung pwede natin substitute? Si C ngayon dito can be equals dun sa tendon natin, sa pre-stressing force natin. Okay? Si KT um, ano yung pwede maging value ni KT? Si KT can be uh, yung formula natin for KT. Formula natin for KT is R squared over YB. Okay? And then alam natin na si R, si R squared ay equal sa um, I over A. No? So ito can be I over AYB, yung KT natin. Right? Then, yung eccentricity natin na E, so, I think we can leave it as E na lang kasi uh, as is naman siyang alam natin yung value. So, pag sinabstitute ko yung value ng C at KT, we have FR I YB plus P times I over A Y B plus P times E. So, yung formula natin for MCR using current points. And what can you observe? Ito yung nakalculate natin formula. And when you look yung formulation natin kanina using yung ating uh, cracking moment ng equation, we arrive with the same equation. Okay? So, ito yung formula natin dito. When you check yung ating uh, last slide, That is the same formula. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, using yung formula sa cracking moment, using yung formula for current points, we can arrive with a value ng cracking moment natin. Okay? Right. So, yan yung sa current points natin. Yan yung relationship ng dalawa. Next is yung tinatawag natin pressure line. Okay? So, what is pressure line? Pressure line in beam is the locus of the resultant compression C along the length. So it is called the thrust line or C line. So we have already discussed this one to the previous topic natin about general concept of pre-stressing. Wherein we can get yung line na to 
by dividing yung moment natin by the value of our pre-stressing. No? So the, pre, the pressure line is used to check whether the C at transfer and under service load is falling within the current zone of the section. Okay? So may effect kasi yun. Depende kung saan tatama yung mismong C line natin o kung saan yung compression block natin. So the eccentricity of the line, uh, hindi ko tong ito na bago, no? so this should be E prime from the center of the section should be less than KT to ensure that C in the current. Okay? So thus, we are using the pressure line to ensure whether there, are, there is any tensile stress or not on the section. So, ibig lang sabihin dito, kapag na-identify natin yung location ng C line and then nag-exceed siya dun sa zone natin, ibig sabihin, um, nag-upward siya, nag-greater than siya dun sa value ng uh, top curve natin or dun sa bottom curve natin, nag-less than siya yung distance niya o na mas malaki yung distance niya mula sa neutral axis, ibig lang niya sabihin na uh, meron tensile stress pag lumabas siya dun sa zone natin. Okay? Pero pag hindi siya lumabas sa zone natin, so wala tayong tension stress which is much more acceptable for us kasi yun yung goal natin kaya tayo nag-pre-stress. Okay? Alright. So, the pressure line can be located from the lever arm A. Okay, so ito yung figure natin before. So ito yung lever arm na yun. So uh, lever arm of our couple nung compression block natin tsaka nung tendon natin. Okay? So kaya nga yung moment na makukuha natin o yung, yung value ng moment na, ma, na meron tayo from the external load tsaka yung sa self-weight natin, i-divide natin dun sa value ng ating um, pre-stressing force o sa C, kung ano yung meron, then we can calculate yung value ni A. No? And then, pag nakuha na natin si A, makukuha na natin yung distance ng pressure line natin from the neutral axis, which is yung E prime. We're in ito yun. Okay? And then, ito yung mga conditions natin. A positive value ng E prime implies that the C acts above the CGC. So, ibig sabihin, nasa taas na ng neutral axis. And then, Otherwise, it acts below the CGC. Okay? So, if the... Ito, kung halimbawa, uh, nag, nag below siya, no? Halimbawa, naging negative yung value ng E prime. And then, kapag kinuha mo yung absolute value niya, greater than siya sa value mo ng KB, ibig sabihin niya, tension is generated at the top of the member. So, kapag lumabas siya dun sa ating current point, so... Uh, di ba ito yung ating okay so ito yung ating uh, beam ito yung ating uh, neutral axis uh, assume natin na ito yung ating current zone so ito yung distance ng ating KB ito yung KT natin kapag na yung value natin ng, ng E prime is below dito asahan mo daw na yung top ng member mo, pag kinuha mo yung tension, da, yung ano mo, uh, iba kanino sa ano natin, kapag exactly dito siya, yung location ng C-line mo, mangyayari ay zero. Yung, zero yung top, yung top mo. Okay? Zero yung stress mo sa top. Kung nandito siya exactly. Pero pag bumaba siya, magkakameron ka na ng tensile force. Okay? So, So, ayos lang natin yung figure para consistent tayo. Eh, this should be, dapat ganito pala yung figure dun sa previous slide, no? Yan, dapat ganyan. Yan yung sa compression natin. So, zero. Then, kapag nag-below nag siya dito sa KB mo, yung value mo ngayon will have a tensile force na dapat may permissible lang siya na value. Okay? So, ayan. Kaka meron ka ng tensile force. Then dito, if yung E natin is greater than dito sa KT natin, so, ibig sabihin, nag-value dito, di ba? Sabi natin, pag directly dito siya, ano na nangyayari? Yung top natin, yung bottom natin, is zero yung kanyang tensile force. Okay? Kapag directly nandito siya yung, yung C line natin. Pero pag slightly upward siya, sabihin magka-tension na yung ating bottom uh, stress which is nanti yung itsura niya. Okay? Ayan. So, may tension ka na dito. 
may tension ka na dito. Okay? So, yun lang yung kailangan mo tandaan dito sa pag-identify ng pressure line. Okay? Ayan. So, next is yung tatawag natin limiting zone. For a full pre-stress member, or type 1 member natin, tension is not allowed under service condition. So, if tension is not al also not allowed to transfer, C always lies within the current. So, dapat hindi lalampas doon sa current zone yung values natin kung type 1 yung member natin. In order to ensure that the C will be lying within the current zone, we can place the yung ating center ng tendon only within the certain zone. Mandiyan na tawag natin limiting zone. Okay? So, ibig sabihin yung tendon nga natin, kung gusto natin na hindi siya magta-tension, kung ito yung member natin, ito yung center ng section natin, and then we have a location for our um, for our zone, no? Nababa ito yung ating current zone. Dapat yung ating tendon is maglalaro lang siya sa location inside nito. No? Para wala, para hindi siya magkamero ng tensile stresses. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, pag type 1 yung dinidesign mo, kailangan identify mo na agad yung current zone mo and then i-check mo agad yung location ng tendon mo. Okay? And then yung location na to, itong location na to all throughout dun sa member natin, ano ba ito yung member natin, yung longitudinal section ko, na halimbawa parabolic ka, may certain distance yan kung saan yung current niya. So ibig sabihin, dito ka lang sa location na to pwede maglagay ng tendon. Okay? Pag lumabas ka na dyan sa, sa, sa zone na yan, magkaka meron ka na ng tensile force. And itong sa limiting zone, we will talk about more of this kapag nagde-design na tayo ng mismong member natin. Okay? Next, for limited pressured members, o yung type 2 o type 3 natin, tensions is allowed at transfer and under service condition. So, yung, limit, yung limiting zone is defined as the zone for placing yung tendon natin, such as the tensile stress in the extreme edges are within allowable values. So, may depende kay problem and kay code, meron siyang di ba, permissible stresses para dun sa ating material. So, dapat i-check natin kung exceeding tayo dun sa permissible stresses na yun. So, we'll be able to identify if our section is still safe for tensile forces. Okay? Or tensile stresses. Alright, so yan. So yan yung sa limiting zone. Now, we try to apply yung lahat ng pinag-usapan natin so far into an example, numerical example. Okay? So, ayan. So ito yung example natin. So, um, an 18.0 meters post-tension beam with a flange section shown. Ito yung section ng ano natin. Uh, has a parabolic profile with no eccentricity at the end. So, parabolic siya. So, ibig sabihin, yung uh, pinakamataas yung eccentricity niya is at the midpoint. Okay? The live load moment at midspan is 648 kN The pre-stress after transfer is 1,600 kN. Assume 15% loss at service. Compressive strength of concrete is 30 MPa. Calculate the following. So, we need to calculate yung current points natin, current levels natin. What is the cracking moment? the location of pressure line at mid-span, at transfer, and at service. And then, the stresses at the top and bottom fibers at transfer and at service. Okay? Assume the following allowable stresses of transfer and service. We have, for compression, ang allowable lang natin is 18 MPa, and for tension, ang allowable lang natin is 1.5 MPa. So, yeah. So, okay. so calculate na natin yung uh, mga unknowns natin. So, let me copy lang this section so that we can calculate yung properties ng section natin. Okay? So, you have to review yung pag-calculate uh, nyo ng sections. No? Yung meaning, pag-calculate ng area, pag-calculate ng, ng inertia. So, you have to be aware or be uh, be knowledgeable dun, no? So, ayan. So, ito yung section natin. So, para mas madali, uh, we can subdivide tong section natin into three areas. Okay? So, tawagin kong area 1 to, then area 2 tong gitna, then area 3 tong bottom natin. Okay? And then, what I will do 
is to identify first yung ating neutral axis kasi yes, kailangan natin yung uh, value ng YB and YT no. So ang unang unknown sa atin is yung current zone natin no. So kailangan natin ng value ng KT. Ang formula niya diba is R squared all over YB. And then yung KB natin ang value is R squared over YT. Okay? So, itong bottom and top na to, ito yung distance ng neutral axis natin. Kaya, ang una natin kailangan i-calculate is yung location ng neutral axis natin. Okay? So, para makuha yan, so, balik yung student tayo. So, Y bar is equal to, since mayroon tayong tatlong area, Area 1, Y1, plus area 2, Phi 2, plus area 3, Y3, all over yung total area natin na A1 plus A2 plus A3. Okay? So, siguro calculate na natin yung total area. It equals to A1 plus A2 plus A3. So, that is equals to 500 times 200 plus... This is ano tong remaining distance na to. So we have one thousand minus four hundred. That is six hundred mm. So we have one fifty times six hundred plus yung a three natin is two fifty times two hundred. Okay. So yung area total natin when calculated is five hundred times two hundred plus one fifty times six hundred plus two fifty times two hundred. That is two hundred forty. Times ten to the three mm squared. Okay, so yun isang value natin. Okay, so identify natin yung mga y one, y two, y three natin. So, mamili lang kayo ng location ng axis, no? So, pwede pa lang ito ibabak na lang to para don tayo sa ah sorry. Ito ko naman talaga. Eh. Okay. So, yung Y1, gawin natin reference axis is yung bottom na lang. No? Okay. So, ang Y1 natin is yung center natin, yung location niya from dito. So, ito yung Y1. That is um, 1,000 minus 100. So, 900 ito. Y2 natin. So, center. Punta dito. So, Y2 is equal to half natin. So, 500 lang yan. And we have Y1. Uh, Y3, sorry. Which is equal to 100. Okay? Yeah. So, pwede natin compute yung ating um, inertia. Okay. So, Y bar equals to area 1 is 500 times 200 times yung distance natin, yung y1 natin is 900 plus 150 times 600 y2 natin is 500. Okay. Plus yung 250 times 200 times yung 100. Lower yung total area natin which is 240 times 10 to the 3. Okay. Bawag ko lang itong konti. Yeah. So, value of Y bar is equals to 500 times 200 times 900 plus 150 times 600 times 500 plus 250 times 200 times 100. All of that divided by 240. We have 583 0.333 mm. Okay? So, yan yung distance ng neutral axis natin. So, ibig sabihin, kung ito yung half, ito yung 500 mark, 583 is somewhere dito. No? So, yan yung ating neutral axis. Okay? So, ito yung ating uh, NA. Okay? So, lagay natin dito 
YB natin is yung calculated natin na 583.333. And then yung ating ating top is 1,000 minus lang natin doon. So we have 416.667. Okay? Yeah. So, yun yung mga kailangan natin. Ano pa bang kailangan natin cross-section? Ah, ano muna? So, current zone muna tayo. So, R. Kailangan natin sa R, formula ng R squared ay equal sa I over A. Okay? So, kailangan natin ng inertia. And kay inertia, kailangan natin transform moment of inertia tayo. So, yung formula natin should be I is equal to IX plus AD squared nung ating lahat ng section. So, summation dapat ito. Ayan. Summation dapat nung tatlong section natin. Okay? Transform transform moment of inertia natin. Okay? So, ano yung D natin? So, yung D is distance nung center nung kada section mula doon sa neutral axis natin. So, uh, let me use another color. So, mula dito sa 1, ito yung D1 natin. That is, uh, ano natin makakalculate yun? Pwede gawin natin is uh, from our neutral axis, di ba 900 yung Y1 natin? 900 minus yung uh, yung value natin na 583.333 para makuha natin yung distance niya. So that is 316.667. Okay? Next, yung dito natin, distance from neutral axis. So para makuha yan, gawin nyo lang is um, So alam natin yung location ng uh, y2. So, ibig sabihin yb o yung neutral axis na 583.33 minus mo lang ng 500. So, alam mo na 83.333 to. Okay? Then ito, yung location nito mula dun sa neutral axis natin. Yung d3 natin. Okay? Dito ko nang lalagay yung value. D3 natin is just 5833 yung papunta sa neutral axis minus 100. So, that should be 483.333. Okay? So, yan yung D1, D2, D3 natin. So, substituting dito sa inertia natin. Uh, we have IX nung una. So, we have 500 times 200 cube over 12 plus area 500 times 200 times yung D natin, D1. So, D1, 6.667 squared. So, ito yung first one. Plus, next is um, 150 times 600 cube over 12 plus 150 times 600 times 83.333 squared. Plus, yung last section natin that is 250 times 200 cube over 12 plus 250 times 200 times yung value ng ating D3 is 483.333 squared. Okay? So, pag kinalculate natin, I is equal to so, yeah, pindutin nyo lang sa calcu. Once you input that, uh, your value will be 2.553 times 10 raised to 10. Uh, mm to the fourth. Okay? So, ang kailangan natin sa R squared ay I over A. So, meron din tayong A. So, ito yung A natin. Ito yung I natin. So, mga calculate na natin si R squared natin. So, yung radius of generation natin. I over A. So that is 2.553 times 10 raised to 10 mm4 over yung ating area na 240 times 10 cube mm squared. Cancel yung unit na yun. So R squared is equal to 2.553 times 10 to the 10 over 240 times 10 to the 3. We have 
375 uh, mm squared. Okay? Ito yung natin para do sa current points natin. Okay? So, KT. Ito ko na lang lalagay. KT is equal to R squared over YB. So, that is 106 375 divided by yung YB natin 583 So that is 182.357 mm. Then yung ating KB is equal to 106.375 divided by yung ating YT naman na 416.667. That is 255.367. Ito yung value ng ating current points. Okay. So kung lalagay natin dyan sa figure natin. Okay. Ito yung figure natin. Okay. Then alam natin again na yung ating uh, neutral axis is somewhere dito. Okay, ito yung ating neutral axis. So yung uh, 182.357, um, I think hindi pa siya mag-exceed dito sa part na to. So, pwedeng ito. Yung KT natin na 182.357. Then, yung ating uh, KB na 255.3. Hindi pa din siya nalampas. So. KB is 255.30 mm. So, ito yung magiging ating current zone. Okay? Ayan. So, So, yan yung sa letter A natin. Na-identify na natin yung current zone natin. Makikita natin yung ating uh, mismong tendon is outside ng current zone natin. So, ibig sabihin, hindi siya type 1 member. No? Hindi na agad siya type 1. So, it's either type 2 and type 3 yung member natin. Okay? Next. Next is to identify daw yung ating cracking moment. So, kailangan natin ng cracking moment na value. Pero before that, we need to check yung since meron tayong value for current point um, I think we can check yung uh, yung yung magiging value yung magiging location ng ating uh, pressure line no? para ma-identify natin kung uh, ano mangyayari sa stress ng top and bottom natin okay so, kung at service yung pinag-uusapan natin, um, we can identify, no? Okay. So, let's try. So, look, yung... Uh, unahin natin letter C kasi location of pressure line yung letter C, no? So, dito sa letter C, location of pressure line at mid span sa at transfer at service and then bago tayo mag ano ng cracking moment mag calculate ng cracking moment okay okay so try natin um, number 2 so location of pressure line So, to calculate that, um, kailangan natin uh, value at ano muna, no? two conditions. Yung una is at transfer. Okay. So, 
ko at transfer ano yung value natin, ano yung kailangan natin, ano yung load na nag a sa atin. So, uh, ang nag a lang na, na load sa atin kapag consider natin yung pressure line is yung moment due to uh, self-weight lang tayo. Okay? So, self-weight lang yung meron tayong value. So, um, gawin natin, uh, kunin natin yung uh, self-weight nung mismong member natin. So, para makuha natin yung kanyang weight o self-weight natin, uh, meron tayong unit weight ng concrete times yung area ng concrete natin. So, unit weight, um, kung walang given, we can assume na 24 kilonewton per cubic meter siya. And yung area natin is 240 times 10 cube mm squared. Okay? So, i-multiply na lang natin yan ng 1 over 1,000 mm meter squared. Para makuha natin yung value ng um, distributed load ng ating loading. So, 24 times 240 times 10 to the 3 divided by 1 million we have 5.76 okay, kilonewton per meter. So, ito yung value ng ating self-weight. So, yung moment natin So, moment na self-weight natin is equal to WL squared all over 8. So, that is 5.76 kilonewton per meter. Then, length natin is 18 squared all over 8. So, equals to sa metro. So, equals sa 5.76 times 18 squared all over 8. So we have 233.28 kilonewton meter okay as our maximum moment at mid span due to self weight okay so yung ating location ngayon so halimbawa ito yung ating beam okay ito yung ating tendon so kung doon yung tendon natin meron siyang uh, tension doon uh, tensile force due to tendon. And then, kung halimbawa, ito yung ating neutral axis. Okay? And then, si compression block natin is, assume natin na somewhere dito, yung compression block natin. So, alam natin na ito is yung ating E prime. Then, ito yung eccentricity ng ating tendon. Yung total, yung lever arm nito is yung A natin. Okay? So, yung nakakreate nilang couple, yung moment na yun, ito yung moment due to self-weight na yan at transfer, no? So, sabihin, MSW is equals to uh, C times A. Okay? Or, A is equals to MSW over C. Pero dito, C is equals to T. And T is equals to how much? Uh, after transfer, 1,000 kilonewton yung ating tensile force no at transfer so 1000 kilonewtons 16 kilonewtons okay so dito this will be uh, 233.28 okay going ko lang times 10 to the 6 para newton mm over yung 1600 times 10 cube para maging newton so cancel out to So, value of A natin, 23.28 times 10 to the 6 all over 16 times 10 to the 3. We have a value of 145.8 mm. Okay? So, kung yan yung value natin, according to our formula, uh, E prime. So, according to sa diagram na lang, A is equal to E prime plus E. So, E prime natin is equal to A minus E. So, 145.8 mm minus, ano ba yung eccentricity pala natin? So, ito yung neutral axis natin. Hindi pa natin alam pa ito yung eccentricity na to. Alam natin yung from bottom, 150 yung ating tendon mula sa bottom. So, mula dito, ang value nito is 583.33 yung distance nito. Minus 150. So, yung ating eccentricity now is 
is equal to 43.333. Okay, so yun yung gagamitin natin dito. 433.33. So E prime natin is equal to 145.8 minus 43.33. We have negative 287.5333. So, ano ibig sabihin nito? Naging negative yung value natin. So, ibig sabihin below tayo ng neutral axis natin. Okay? Tapos check natin sa KB. Si KB natin, si E natin is negative 287. Si KB below is two, negative 255. So, ibig sabihin si E prime lampas pa siya. No? So, yung location ng ating compression zone, yung ating um, pressure line at service, okay, is somewhere dito. Okay, ito yung lock of pressure line at transfer. Sorry, at transfer pala tayo muna. Okay? Kung yun yung location niya, okay? therefore, nag-exceed siya dun sa bottom natin. Therefore, ano ibig sabihin? Therefore, yung ating um, since higyan natin ng ano, no? Since um, since the pressure line is below the bottom current point so below siya ng bottom current point we sabihin yung um the stress on the top fiber is greater than zero. Okay? So, ibig sabihin magkakamayroon tayo ng tension stress dun sa ating top fiber. Yun yung ibig sabihin niya. Okay? Kasi bakit? Di ba sabi natin dito kanina, balikan natin, no? Baka nalilibutan lang. Sabi natin kanina, doon sa bottom curve natin, kapag si stress yung ating C o yung ating pressure line ng compression block natin is directly uh, doon sa KB natin, located at KB, so dito, equal daw sa zero yung top natin. Pero since nag-below siya dito, ibig sabihin, meron tayong tensile force. Okay? So meron tayong tensile stress dun sa ating fiber, dun sa at, sir, at transfer. Okay? So yun yung magandang isang note natin. So yun yung nangyayari sa ating uh, transfer condition. Okay? Okay. Next. Paano naman yung sa uh, at service, no? Sino malayo? Okay. Kung at service tayo, ano ibig sabihin? Meron na tayong external load. And kailangan calculate din natin yung pressure line natin. So Ang mangyayari na lang is dadagdagan na lang natin yung ating uh, moment. no So ito yung ating load figure. Ito yung ating, um, ito yung ating neutral axis. Ito yung ating uh, tensile force. Then assuming ito yung ating C. Yung moment arm nila is tatawagin natin A. Distance to pressure line is A prime. Ito ay E. Okay? Also C is equals to T. So, yung moment na kinecreate yung dalawa na couple, yan yung moment natin ng service na. So, uh, wala namang ibang given kundi yung dead load 
plus live load na tayo. Yung dead load natin, yung self weight natin. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, yung MDL plus LL is equal sa CA. Okay? So, para makalculate si A, so that is yung MDL plus LL natin over C, which is equal sa 1,600 kilonewton lang ba? No, no? Kasi sabi, at service... 15% na yung na loss. Okay? So be very careful with that. So this should be 0.85 na lang ng 1600 kilo na to. Okay? Which is equal sa 1360 kilo na to. Okay? So yung total natin is yung sa dead load natin yung self weight na calculate natin previously. As two three three point twenty eight two three three point twenty eight kilonewton yan plus yung sa live load given natin is six hundred forty eight okay times ten to the six para maging newton mm all over yung compression natin one three sixty times ten to the three newton so cancel natin yung newton a natin is two three three point twenty eight 8 plus 648 times 1 to the 6 lower 1 to 60 to the 3. So we have 648 uh, mm. Okay, so yan agad, exactly yan yung nakuha na value. No? So yung E prime natin based from the figure is equal to A minus E. So that is 648 minus yung E natin, again, ang value niya ay so, 433.333. So, 433.333. So, E prime is equal to, so that is 214.667. So, nakita natin, positive siya. No? So, ibig sabihin, above siya dito sa atin, above siya ng neutral axis natin. Pero yung value natin, 214. Si top curve natin is 182. So, ibig sabihin, at, at, ano, at service, summary dito yung location ng ating pressure line. So, lock, hook, pressure line natin at service. Okay? And, anong ibig sabihin nun? Okay? Since, yung same no, no, depression line the PL is above the top kern kern point the stress at bottom will be greater than zero. Okay? So, pag greater than zero, uh, tensile stress exists. No? Ibig sabihin niya. Okay? Same dito, meron siyang tensile stress. Okay? So, yun yung ibig sabihin ng pressure line. Sinasabi na niya agad na may tensile stress tayong makukuha. Kapag nag-check tayo ng at transfer, meron tayong tensile stress at top, at bottom. Okay? At top, sorry. And then dito, at service, meron tayong tensile force at bottom. Okay? So, paano naman ito na-identify? So, since nag-upward nag nga siya dito, ano ba yung nakalagay natin kanina? Um, dito nakalagay, yan, kapag yung position ng yung compression natin, yung pressure line natin, is directly do sa current point natin, zero yung ating tensile stress. Pero pag siya ay nag-greater than, magkakamero na siya dito ng tensile stress dito. Okay? So, ayan yun yung ibig sabihin niya. So, yan yung sa letter B natin. Okay? 
So now, uh, kailangan natin calculate ngayon yung cracking moment natin. Okay? And sa cracking moment, nag, uh, nag, uh, kailan siya nag-exist? Nag okay? Nag-exist siya ay dun sa ating bottom, no? Na, ano, tulad ng mga discussion natin kanina. Okay? So, letter C. So, cracking cracking moment tayo. Okay? Mula doon sa derived equation natin, MCR is equal to uh, FCR I over YB plus P um, lagi si MCR at service lagi si MCR no? kaya dapat effective yung P natin AYB plus PE times E okay? so wala pa tayong value na FCR FCR is from the code 0.67 square root of 30 okay Ang value niya is 3.7 MPA. Okay? So, MCR is equal to 3.7 MPA. Tapos, yung ating inertia from the previous slide. So, hindi ko na lang dito. 2.553 times 10 to the 10. All over yung YB natin, which is 583.333 plus yung ating value ng effective free stress after at service uh, 1360 times 10 to the 3 inertia 2.533 times 10 to the 10 lower area natin is 240 times 10 to the 3 yb is 583.333 plus yung 1360 natin times 10 to the 3 times yung eccentricity na 433.333. Okay? So, MCR, pag kinalculate natin, 3.7, 2.553 to the 10 over 583.333 plus 1360 to the 3, 2.53 times 10 to the 10, 240 to the 3, 583.333 then Plus 1360 to the 343.33. Okay. So MCR is 997.325 kilonewton meter. So ito yung cracking moment mismo natin. Okay. So if we want to get yung halimbawa cracking moment natin at so, di ba doon nagka-service tayo si live load lang yun na dagdag no so ibig sabihin mula dito sa total cracking moment natin pwede natin ma-identify si cracking moment ni live load so gawin lang natin yung MCR natin minus natin yung moment ng self weight natin so, yung DL natin so 997.325 minus yung 233.28 natin so yung Live load cracking moment natin is 76 Ano ba? 23.28 764.045 kN meter. So, itong value na to na to ay greater than dun sa value ng live load natin. Therefore, since greater than siya, section is and crack, no? Okay. So, di ibig sabihin nun, wala tayong reduction dun sa moment of inertia natin. Yun ang ibig sabihin na, no? So, yun yung mahalaga dun. And when you check yung NSCP, may iba't ibang type tayo ng section na tayong uncrack, meron tayong um, crack, and then meron tayo yung nasa gitna nila, which is yung transition na member. Okay? Na later, di-discuss natin in detail. Okay? Pero dito, since sections is uncrack, ibig sabihin, pag kinalculate natin yung stresses sa top fiber and bottom fiber, ang gagamitin natin, value ng, ng cross-section natin is yung uncrack natin. 
the cross section. Okay. Okay. So next, yung last uh, question, which is yung ating stresses, no? So nine muna natin yung sa at uh, transfer. Okay. So at transfer na stresses. So at transfer, ano ba yung meron alam tayo? Meron lang tayo ay um, yung ating uh, axial due to pre-stressing. Okay? Meron tayo nung uh, moment due to pre-stressing. So magpo-cause siya ng, uh, ng moment na paganto, no? Na magpo-cause ng uh, downward or ng negative bending. So compressive tayo sa bottom tensile tayo sa taas. So, compressive yung bottom, tensile yung taas. Okay? So, this is a P times yung eccentricity times yung Y bottom all over IG. So, dito sa taas is P, E, Y, T over IG. Positive. Negative P over A. And then, ano pa? Yung due to self weight. So, sa self weight since that is a load, magkakos siya ng positive bending natin. So, compressive tensile dito. So, compressive yung taas, tensile yung baba. Okay, so this is negative uh, M, S, W, Y, T, all over I, G. And ito is positive M, S, W, Y, bottom over I, G. Okay? So, uh, F at top equals to negative P over A plus P E Y T all over I T minus M S W Y T all over I T. Substitute. Value natin since uh, transfer pa lang tayo. Yung 1, 6 pa lang yung gagamitin natin. Area is 240 times 10 to the 3 plus um, 1, 6 times 10 to the 3 times Yung eccentricity natin na 433.33. Yung YT natin na 416.667. So, verify nyo na lang sa figure. IG natin na 2.553 times 10 to the 10. Okay? Then minus yung moment natin sa self-rate na 233.28 times 10 to the 6. YT natin is 416.667 all over. 2.553 times 10 to the 10. Okay? So, pag-kilompute natin yung um, stress at top, we will have 0 0.84 MPA. Okay? So, tensile siya. So, yun yung sinasabi kanina na magkakamayaran tayo ng tension dito, no? Nakalagay dito, sa ano natin, magkakamayaran tayo ng Ayan, yung sa top fiber natin, magkakamero ng tensile stress. Mag-exist ang tensile stress. Okay? So, yung value niya is 0.84. Pero yung ating, according to sa problem, ano yung allowable natin tensile? Allowable natin is 1.5. Okay? So, since our answer or our value is less than so 1.5, therefore, okay. Okay? Next, yung ating F-bot. Okay, so um, F-bot equals to negative P over A uh, minus P E Y B all over I G plus M S W Y B all over I G. Okay, so negative 1, 6 times 10 to the 3 over 240 times 10 cubed. Okay, plus 1, 6 times 10 to the 3, 433.33. Ngayon yung bottom yung gagamitin nating value. 583.333 all over 2.553 times 10 to the 10 plus 233.28 times 10 to the 6 times 583.333 all over 2.553 times 10 to the 10. Okay? Upon calculating, F-bot is equals to negative 
17.178 MPa. Okay? So, yung negative dito signify siya ay compression. Compressive. And yung allowable natin sa compressive, i-check lang natin. Value niya should be negative MPa. No? Negative 18. Okay? So, siya ay, since siya ay greater than um, so kung absolute pinag-uusapan natin, less than siya ng negative 18. Okay? So, kung absolute to ha, so okay tayo, therefore okay. Pero since naka-negative yung value, dapat yung, signal, yung symbol niya, dapat greater than kasi mas malapit siya sa zero. Okay? Pero ganito na lang para hindi kayo malita. Okay? So, ayan yung ating stresses. So, pasado tayo at transfer. Now, paano yung at service? So, at service, um, ano bang mangyayari? Uh, magbabago yung value ng P at service. Ito, yung value ng P. Tapos, mayroon na tayong for live load. Okay? So, uh, another sheet na lang siguro. Okay? So, uh, at service, Okay, so we have again a compression and negative P over A plus again yung ating from uh, from pre-stressing steel uh, negative P times eccentricity uh, YBIG plus P E Y T I G plus yung magiging ano ng moment natin ngayon is total na siya. Okay, so so this is positive m total times extrans uh, times yung kanyang y bottom over i t and dito negative m t y t over i t okay so yung f top natin so ano muna yung m t natin nga so m d l plus m l l natin okay so yun yung two three three point twenty eight Plus 648. Okay. So that is, and total natin is 881.28 kilonewton meter. Okay. So si F top natin will be, uh, this is, um, dapat yung, ano na, no? 1360 nga ba? Yung ating, ayan, 1360. So at service na tayo, so negative 1360 times 10 cube lower 240 times 10 cube uh, plus uh, 1360 times 10 cube times yung e natin na 433.33 times yung yt natin na 416.667 or over ig na 2.553 times 10 to the 10. Okay, so minus yung moment natin na 881.28 times 10 to the 6 para maging newton meter, newton millimeter times 416.667 all over yung ating um, 2.553 times 10 to the 10. Okay, so F top natin at service. So let me check. So negative 1360 to the 3. 240 to the 3 plus 1360 to the 3 43.33 times 416.667 divided by 2.553 times 10 to the 10 minus 881.28 times 10 to the 6 times 416.667 all over 2.553 times 10 to the 10. Okay, we have negative 10.432 MPa. So compressive ulit. Okay. So, siya ay, again, kung absolute value tayo, less than negative 18 MPa. So, that is okay. Okay? Pero dapat greater than negative MPa. Pero okay pa din. Okay? Sa F bottom, um, equals tayo sa negative 1360 times 10 cube all over 240 times 10 to the 3 minus uh, 1360 times uh, 10 to the 3 433 
5.33 times, mababago yung value, magiging 583.33 lower minus 2.553 times 10 to the 10 plus 881.28 times 10 to the 6 times 583.333 lower 2.553 times 10 to the 10. Okay? So, upon calculating, F bottom I equals sa 1.00 MPA, which is positive so siya ay uh, tension. Okay? So, siya ay less than 1.5 MPA, so therefore, okay. Okay? So, pag tinignan natin F bottom to, so, anong sa natin matcha-check yun? Kanina, dito yun, no? Ayan, dito. Sabi, at service, yan, the stress at bottom will be greater than zero. So, magkakamero ng tensile stress dun sa bottom. So, dun po lang sa pag-locate ng stresses, na-identify mo na agad na magkakamero siya ng, uh, ng tensile force or tensile stress. Ang di mo lang alam yung value niya kung mag exceed siya dun sa limit na sinet ng code. Okay? So, dito, okay naman siya. So, this is okay. Alright? So, yan. So, that's how you analyze a given section if it satisfies yung mga uh, prescribed ni code. Okay? So, uh, this will be the, uh, the, the coverage muna ng session na to. Next time, we will be starting with the ultimate strength analysis of rectangular sections. Okay? So, I hope you have uh, understood kung ano yung mga meaning ng cracking moment, current points, and also yung ating um, pressure line, and also how to calculate them. Okay? So, if you have any question. Uh, in the future or any comments regarding the session, please don't hesitate to comment or uh, chat me on G on Facebook so that uh, we can discuss uh, what is the problem. Okay? So, okay? so see you guys again on the next session. Thank you.